Hello, I am Boris, and you're watching Clown Lore. And today, I don't really got anything planned. Hmm. Well, I'll see you on the next episode of Clown Lore. Okay, look. Here's what I'll do. I'll show you all a kind jester by teaching you about jesters. And I know what you're thinking. Jesus, Boris, I'm glad you dragged that joke out so long, and you're welcome. But yeah, today we're talking about jesters. What are jesters all about? What were jesters like? What's with the hat? Well, hold your horses because we're getting into that. A jester is basically a professional fool. A highly valued member of any medieval court. And while some may assume a jester was just an idiot who goofed around, there's a lot more to that. A jester could be a magician, a sneaky advisor, a minstrel. No, 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 not that kind of minstrel. The term has two meanings that we'll go into right now. One of the meanings is an extremely awful kind of band, and the other is a medieval singer or musician. The term did include both types of jesters as well. Both types of jesters? Well, you see, there are two main types of fools in the medieval era. The first type was the natural fool. A natural fool was somebody who was born with a deformity of any kind. Anyone with a deformity or disability was believed to be closer to God, closer to the truth. So medieval kings sought them out with a very high value. And this allowed them to get away with being more direct and opinionated towards a king. Despite the fact that disabled people and deformed people are just people, the Times didn't think so. Now, the second type of fool we'll talk about is called the licensed fool. Without any sort of disfigurement, they were valued, just not as much. They weren't seen as supernatural in any way. So while they could get away with a lot, they couldn't get away with as much as a natural fool. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is the jester costume. A jester's costume would vary wildly depending on the actual jester. A jester's costume was always very high quality, especially if they worked in a court. They were also custom made. Now, while there wasn't one uniform that every jester weared, there were often some ground rules in making your costume. Often hard contrasting colors and patterns. Now, the hat. Originally, a jester hat would look very different than you would expect. First off, it wasn't just a hat. It was a cowl. And the horns, instead it had donkey ears that were shaped into the fabric. These ears would later become the pair of jester horns, just a two. The third represented a rooster's comb. On top of that, they also carried a scepter called a marathi. The marathi wasn't just a scepter to carry around, but it was also a prop to be incorporated into the act. Normally, the end had a head carved onto it, but also sometimes had small machinery built into the head. But now, speaking of a jester's head, let's talk about what even was required to be a jester. Yes, jesters were called fools, but they were actually very smart. A mind that needed to know when to joke, when to be a fool, and when to just fade back and watch. Being a jester wasn't easy. Sure, comedy is universal, but making people laugh in a time where most people suffered, making a king with the weight of an entire country smile, that was hard. It relied on delivery, timing, and knowing the audience very well. And a jester knowing their audience, being skilled in their craft, it came with some pretty big privileges, aside from being able to tell a joke about whoever you want. I mean, within good taste. Remember, a jester needs to know when to fade out. A jester would basically be one of the most important nobles in the court, protected by the king and even allowed to eat food with the royal family. They would be able to tell the royal children stories, assuring the favor of the future monarchs. But any job had risk, and jesters had their risk too. A jester would normally be in charge of delivering messages, especially to the king but also to opposing armies in war. And if the army didn't like the message, it wasn't uncommon for them to be catapulted back. Normally, it was just their head, but there was a few that died from hitting the ground as a full body of jester. And jesters who are around a royal family all the time would have to watch it. Remember, they gotta know when the fate in the background. And being a sucky jester could risk banishment and execution, 
but a good jester knew how to avoid these. While being a jester was hard, basically anyone could be one. What I'm saying is it didn't really matter where you were from or where you were born. Yeah, being a jester took work, but you could be anyone and still be a jester. Even women could be jesters. And in medieval ages, where they could poke fun at the most powerful man in the country, that was an envied role for the time. And while jesters aren't super popular today, it's good that we remember our history as clowns. But that being said, I think it's time to end this episode. Want to see the next episode? Just subscribe. And I'll see you on the next episode of Clown Lore. Bye!